I meet many people all the time who tell me about their intuitive, that, that, that little thing that happens in their life, which they have this life response to something. It's often very minor and they don't even recognize it. But it's happening in human beings all the time. And a koan will enable you to... Um, you just put it in the back of your mind. You don't think of the koan. But all the time, the silence and the concentration on the breath, it's unravelling for you. So how did you move from being a yoga practitioner mm. to working with prisoners um, mm. in prison, teaching them yoga and meditation? Mm. I presume you did a training in, in being a yoga teacher first? I did. I had a, a wonderful teacher in Oxford called Cecil Fowler mm. and um, a wonderful teacher in London called Alan Babington. Mm. And Alan was very keen on Zen meditation, so that was a very helpful route through, uh, through into the training that I was doing. Mm. And then um, in 1989, somebody in a meditation group I was sitting in with Cecil Fowler, as well as my Zen group, uh, was someone called Anne Witherall who started the Prison Phoenix Trust uh, because she had been doing some research into mystical experience and discovered quite by chance that many prisoners have a mystical experience right where they are and in those early days I remember working with her and writing to a man in Glasgow who had an experience six months into a dirty protest, if you know what that is. I do, yes. And, yeah. um, and that really had made a great impression on so me. So when you say mystical experience, what mm. do you actually mean? Well, I think it can be interpreted in many ways, but for me a mystical experience is when everything stops. For a split second, body and mind fall away, and you are just left with this... Um, this eternal nothing which has no thing, it's empty but of course it's full of what the Buddhists call the 10,000 things in the universe nothing to see at all and if you know what's happening yes. that's bliss, but if you don't that can be pretty terrifying if you don't understand the process absolutely I think that's absolutely right, and I remember a prisoner once writing to me and telling me that um, he had an experience like this and he didn't know what to do with it or where to take it. And, um, and I was very, very happy yeah. that um, a, f a couple of years on from that, uh, he was able, on his own, to make some sort of sense of it, and uh, we were in touch together. So you, you did the course and you learnt to become yes. a, a, um, a yoga teacher. Yes. And then what actually drew you to, to it's an unusual thing for, mm. a, for a, if I can call mm. you a middle class person <laughs> to actually go into a prison and yes. teach people who are a lot less fortunate yes. than themselves and come from very different backgrounds most of them too. Yeah. So what drew you to do that? Well, I think I'd spent 10 years as a yoga teacher working um, with uh, Down's children and um, uh, people with uh, multiple sclerosis and uh, I worked for four miles in a psychiatric unit at the Fairmile Hospital. I've always been very interested in working with people who um, have challenges in their life. Uh, they teach you a great deal about yourself, of course, and they are um, enormously um, interesting. And I felt that yoga was such an extraordinary practice, it could be very helpful for people with learning difficulties. And then when Anne asked me if I would go and teach the young offenders in a Category A prison in Aylesbury, 18 to 21, um, I said yes. So Category A means what? It means, it means a high security, top security. So these are guys that have, the most, um, that have done pretty, pretty bad things in, in, they in the have. world. They have. Most yeah. of them have, um, not most of them, but a lot of them, to be truthful, Many of them get tanked up on lager when they're about 13, find a gun somewhere, shoot someone. Dreadful for the person who's been shot. They've lost their life. But also for the young person, they've lost their life too. Yeah, sure. They've then yeah. committed to a life sentence, maybe two life sentences. And it's a, a very dreadful thing for them. But, but, but how was it the first time you're going in the prison and yeah. you're going through the, yeah. I don't know exactly what it was what, what it like there, but yeah. there's barbed wire yeah. and the security locks yeah. and there's guards, yeah. and then yeah. you go in and you've got a, 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 a group of prisoners in a room yes. who 
you haven't met before yes. and then you spend an hour or something with them and you're yes. teaching them yoga and meditation that yeah. that's a challenge it must yeah. it must be from from it coming was. from the outside world it was and i was absolutely terrified on that first class and um, I, I did find the prison environment quite shocking um, in Aylesbury in those days things were bad and um, and there were lots of problems people used to um, well a lot of things were thrown out of the windows that shouldn't have been thrown out of the windows to do with hygiene and you had to walk through this to get to that very first class I remember and when the door opened um, there were 22 young men and I just knew immediately that this was where I wanted to work because I wondered if I was going to be killed. <laughs> but there's presumably a guard with you robbed. in the room, isn't there? Uh, I didn't think there was on that really? first day. And so in you're fact, on there your never own was after you... that. Yeah, that's, that's right. It's very brave. But, uh, but the thing is, they were just like my own son. There was no difference, huh. absolutely no difference from my son or his friends. I mean, they were, some of them were different coloured skin. Um, some, some of them um, might not have had uh, the same fire that he'd been through, but exactly the same, the same loyalty, the same loving hearts, the same terrific sense of humour, the same great sense of pain and suffering. Um, I was hooked. <laughs> so you actually got something out of it as well by the sound Very of much. It. That very yeah. first class was an interesting class because there was a boy there. He... He was from Ireland and he had a lot of problems when he first got to Aylesbury and he used to carry his head down a lot and in that particular class he tried to do everything he could to dismantle the class. I remember he, there were some taps in the room, he turned so he tried to sabotage it. He tried you're... to sabotage okay. the class the whole time yeah. and I remember right at the very end he said I've got a headache, I've got a headache so I said well why don't you lie down and I was teaching the class and just rubbing his forehead a little bit and then he jumped up and then finally at the end of the class we had some cushions in a circle and everybody sat down cross-legged and we were just going to sit down and do some breathing practice and then a little meditation and he tried everything he could and I just sort of looked at him and I looked at the cushion and I don't know what it was but it's this wonderful universal um, gift that uh, is always active he just gave up and he just came and sat down on the cushion. And from that moment, he was one of the best students that I ever had. He learnt, it motivated him to read and, and write. He wrote a little book, which he gave the proceeds to children in Bosnia. Uh, and he's gone from strength to strength. So somehow you didn't fight him. Oh, you were not just, at all. But this is interesting, not because you didn't fight him, telling him yeah. he was wrong and to stop yeah. sabotaging the class. Yeah. You basically, in your own way, supported him. Yes. And through that, something could open in him. Yeah. But they were, he, was, he was doing nothing wrong. He was doing what he was doing habitually. Yes. He no, was just looking yeah. for a way out of that yeah. imprisonment, really. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying from that first time you were hooked mm. and then presumably yeah. you started to go to other prisons and... Well, I, 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 I taught one day a week at Aylesbury for two years and learned so much from those guys. They were absolutely wonderful. And, um, and I think... Many of them stayed in touch afterwards and wrote, and it was, uh, uh, was a great privilege and has been a great privilege to still be in touch with some of them. Uh, and then Anne died, the founder of the Trust, and she asked me if I'd go and work with the, um, in the office and start answering letters that prisoners wrote in to us. And, um, and we decided to that just teaching meditation alone wasn't enough, we should be teaching many more yoga classes. So we started to work with qualified yoga teachers and train them for prison work and train them in this silent practice of sitting, not Zen, but just sitting in silence that we recommended, which can be so healing and therapeutic, but best of all for prisoners it's safe. Because if you've been in a long addiction history, which so many people have these days, or if you have a sex offending problem or many other problems, the practice of silence is safe. And one of the things about being a prisoner is you're extremely vulnerable. Anybody can lay anything on you. And so I feel very happy that it's a respectful practice that we offer.